Section number nine of Our Cats and All About Them. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Thomas Coos Kosmarski. Our Cats and All About Them by harrison weir the brown tabby cat the tabby cat is doubtless one of if not the most common of colors and numbers many almost endless varieties of both tint and markings of these those with very broad bands of black or narrow bands of black on nearly a black ground are usually called black tabby and if the bands are divided into spots instead of being in continuous lines then it is a spotted black tabby but i purpose in this paper to deal mostly with the brown tabby that is to say a tabby whose ground color is of a very rich orangey dark brown ground without any white and that is evenly proportionably and not too broadly but elegantly marked on the face head breast sides back belly legs and tail with bands of solid deep shining black the front part of the head or face and legs breast and belly should have a more rich red orange tint than the back but which should be nearly if not equal in depth of color though somewhat browner the markings should be graceful in curve, sharply, well, and clearly defined, with fine deep black edges, so that the brown and black are clear and distinct, the one from the other not blurred in any way. The banded tabby should not be spotted in any way, excepting those few that nearly always occur in the face and sometimes on the forelegs. The clearer, redder, and brighter the brown, the better. The nose should be deep red, bordered with black, the eyes an orange color, slightly diffused with green in form the head should not be large nor too wide being rather longer than broad so as not to give too round or clumsy an appearance ears not large nor small but of moderate size and of good form legs medium length rather long than short so as not to lose grace of action body long narrow and deep towards the forepart tail long and gradually tapering towards the point feet round with black claws and black pads yellowish white around the black lips and brown whiskers are allowable but orange tinted are far preferable and pure white should disqualify a cat of this description is now somewhat rare what are generally shown as brown tabbies are not sufficiently orange brown but mostly of dark brownish gray this is simply the ordinary tabby and not the brown tabby proper as i stated in my notes on the tortoise shell cat the best parents to obtain a good brown tabby from is to have a strongly marked not too broad banded tabby he cat and a tortoise shell she cat with little black or red tabby she cat the produce being when tabby 
generally of a rich brown or sometimes what is termed black tabby and also red tabby the picture illustrating these notes is from one so bred and is a particularly handsome specimen there were two he-cats in the litter one the dark brown tabby just mentioned which i named Aaron, and the other a very fine red tabby moses this last was even a finer animal than Aaron, being very beautiful in color and very large in size but he alas like many others was caught in wires set by poachers and was found dead his handsome brother still survives though no longer my property the bounded red tabby should be marked precisely the same as the brown tabby only the bands should be of deep red on an orange ground the deeper in color the better almost a chocolate on orange is very fine the nose deep pink as also the pads of the feet the ordinary dark tabby the same way as the brown and so also the blue or silver only the ground color should be of a pale soft blue color not the slightest tint of brown in it the clearer the lighter the brighter the blue the better bearing in mind always that the bands should be of a jet black sharply and very clearly defined the word tabby was derived from a kind of taffeta or ribbed silk which when calendared or what is now termed watered is by that process covered with wavy lines this stuff in bygone times was often called tabby hence the cat with lines or markings on its fur was called a tabby cat but it might also one would suppose with as much justice be called a taffety cat unless the calendaring of taffety caused it to become tabby certain it is that the word tabby only referred to the markings or stripes not to the absolute color for in wit and drollery page three forty three is the following her petticoat of satin her gown of crimson tabby be that as it may i think there is little doubt that the foregoing was the origin of the term yet it was also called the brinded cat or the brindled cat also tiger cat with some the gray cat gray malkin but i was rather unprepared to learn that in norfolk and suffolk it is called a cypress cat why cypress cat quoth i i do not know said my informant all i know is that such is the case so i referred to my bailey's dictionary of seventeen thirty and there sure enough was the elucidation for i found that cypress was a kind of cloth made of silk and hair showing wavy lines on it and coming from cypress therefore this somewhat strengthens the argument in favor of tafeta or tabby but it is still curious that the norfolk and suffolk people should have adopted a kind of cloth as that representing the markings and color of the cat and that of a different name from that in use for the cat one or more counties calling it a tabby cat as regards color and the other naming the same as cypress i take this to be exceedingly interesting how or when such naming took place 
i am at present unable to get the least clue though i think from what i gather from one of the crystal palace cat show catalogues that it must have been after fifteen ninety seven as the excerpt shows that at that time the shape and color was like a leopard's which of course is spotted and is always called the spotted leopard since this i have learned that the domestic cat is said to have been brought from cyprus by merchants as also was the tortoiseshell cyprus is a color a sort of reddish yellow something like citron so a cyprus cat may mean a red or yellow tabby however i find holloway in his dictionary of provincialisms eighteen thirty nine gives the following calamanco cat s calamanco a glossy stuff a tortoise shell cat norfolk salmon in the complete english physician sixteen ninety three page three twenty six writing of the cat says it is a neat and cleanly creature often licking itself to keep it fair and clean and washing its face with its four feet the best are such as of a fair and large kind and of an exquisite tabby color called cyprus cats spotted tabby cat i have thought it best to give two illustrations of the peculiar markings of the spotted tabby or leopard cat of some as showing its distinctness from the ordinary and banded tabby one of my reasons being that i have when judging at cat shows often found excellent specimens of both entered in the wrong class thereby losing all chance of a prize though if rightly entered either might very possibly have taken honors i therefore wish to direct particular attention to the spotted character of the markings of the variety called the spotted tabby it will be observed that there are no lines but what are lines in other tabbies are broken up into a number of spots and the more these spots prevail to the exclusion of lines or bands the better the specimen is considered to be the variety of the color or tint on which these markings or spots are placed constitutes the name such as black spotted tabby brown spotted tabby and so on the red spotted tabby or yellow spotted tabby in she cats being by far the most scarce these should be marked with spots instead of bands on the same ground color as the red or yellow banded tabby cat in the former the ground color should be a rich red with spots of a deep almost chocolate color while that of the yellow tabby may be a deep yellow cream with yellowish brown spots both are very scarce and are extremely pretty any admixture of white is not allowable in the class for yellow or red tabbies such exhibit must be put into the class should there be one which is usually the case at large shows for red or yellow and white tabbies the exhibitors will do well to make a note of there is a rich colored brown tabby hybrid to be seen at the zoological society gardens in regent's park 
between the wild cat of Bengal and a tabby she-cat. It is handsome, but very wild. These hybrids, I am told, will breed again with tame variety or with others. In the brown-spotted tabby, the dark gray-spotted tabby, the black-spotted tabby, the gray or the blue-spotted tabby, the eyes are best yellow or orange-tinted, with the less of the green the better. The nose should be of a dark red, edged with black or dark brown, in the dark colors or somewhat lighter color in the gray or blue tabbies. The pads of the feet in all instances must be black. In the yellow and the red tabby, the nose and the pads of the feet are to be pink. As regards the tail, that should have larger spots on the upper and lower sides instead of being annulated, but this is often difficult to obtain. It has always occurred to me that the spotted tabby is a much nearer approach to the wild English cat and some other wild cats in the way of color than the ordinary broad-banded tabby. Those specimens of the crosses said to be between the wild and domestic cat that I have seen have had a tendency to be spotted tabbies, and these crosses were not infrequent in bygone times when the wild cats were more numerous than at present, as is stated to be the case by that reliable authority Thomas Bewick. In the year 1873, there was a specimen shown at the Crystal Palace Cat Show, and also the last year or two there has been exhibited at the same place a most beautiful hybrid between the East Indian wild cat and the domestic cat. It is shown in the spotted tabby class and won the first prize. The ground color was a deep blackish brown with well-defined black spots, black pads to the feet rich in color, and very strong and powerfully made, and not by any means a sweet temper. It was a he-cat, and though I have made inquiry, I have not been able to ascertain that any progeny has been reared from it, yet I have been informed that such hybrids between the Indian wild cat and the domestic cat breed freely. End of section 9. Recording by John Thomas Kuz Kuzmarski. One and the same recordings dot com.